Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship service on, I can't believe I'm saying this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. I just, I can't believe we're already here. And obviously we are not here together. We would all far prefer to be here together on the fourth Sunday of Advent um, with Christmas just around the corner. Obviously we are not. Um, session met this week and considered local health department guidance, considered the rising infection rates, continually rising infection rates in Greenbrier County, uh, and decided that the best thing to do, the right thing to do, the responsible thing to do, um, was to continue the in-person pause and offer uh, virtual worship services. Um, and so, you know, our, our main concern is that we continue to do our best to meet people's spiritual needs in the in the world in which we find ourselves today. Um, so we're gonna do that. And, and that most of the announcements today are along those lines. Um, one is not, so let's get to that announcement first. Please mark your calendars. Our congregational meeting is coming up on January the 10th. Uh, if we're in person for worship, it'll immediately follow that. If we are not, um, we'll operate virtually. And if we are here in person, but you can't come, we will offer a virtual option for you to participate. Um, so our bylaws allow that, and, and we're going to do that to make sure folks can participate in the congregational meeting again January the 10th. Now, in terms of Christmas services, uh, this evening, uh, Sunday, December 20th, 5.30, we will not be here for our normal candlelight service, but we will have our normal candlelight service at 5.30. It'll be available virtually. We're going to do it live. Um, I'm going to send out the Zoom link like normal. Uh, you can participate via Zoom. You can watch it on YouTube Live. You can watch it on Facebook Live. We are doing our best to make it as widely available as possible. Now, one thing to say, this is our first time doing that. <laughs> this is our first time doing Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube Live simultaneously. So there will probably be some hiccups along the way, and we ask for your patience. Uh, but then we'll use the same format for Christmas Eve. We'll do our traditional time, Christmas Eve at 11 p.m. That will also be a live virtual service, and you can watch through a Zoom link I email you, uh, through Facebook, or through YouTube. We ask that you bring a couple things to those services. The candlelight, bring your own candle. If you need one, let me know. For Christmas Eve, bring your own communion elements, bread, juice. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly those things. These are symbols, symbols of God's grace and God's forgiveness, uh, but you know those are the traditional symbols that we use. So we will celebrate communion. We ask that you, as you watch from home or wherever you're watching, you have your own elements with you and we'll participate in communion together. One other thing on Christmas Eve, you know, for years, I remember as a child driving by the church and seeing the luminaries outside. Uh, we're bringing the luminaries back this year, um, so you may not be able to be here inside for worship, but a lot of folks on Christmas Eve like to drive around and look at lights and look at churches, and we're going to have the luminaries outside on Christmas Eve. So please, drive by, think about all the wonderful memories that you have um, here, worshipful memories in this place in Christmas's past. Uh, pray for your brothers and sisters I know that you miss so dearly. And pray for the future that God surely has in store for us just around the corner. So now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for today's virtual worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent.
lit the hope candle, the peace candle, and last week the joy candle, and today we light the final purple candle, which is the love candle. Because God loves us. And because God loves us, God sent God's Son to save us from ourselves. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. The coming of the one who will save us, our Messiah, the Christ child. And so, as we've lit the love candle, will you please join with me um, in the call to worship that's printed in the bulletin you received. During Advent, we wait for the one promised in Scripture, and he will be called Everlasting Father. We wait for the one who knows our deepest thoughts and fulfills our every need, and he will be called Everlasting Father. We wait for the one who will love us unconditionally as a parent loves a child, and he will be called Everlasting Father. We wait for the one whose grace and mercy will never, ever end, and he will be called Everlasting Father. So normally this time of year, we gather here underneath the Christmas tree with the kids, and uh, we read children's Christmas stories, if we're not telling a Penny Lane story, and boy, I miss those Penny Lane stories with the kids. Uh, I wanted to read a story with all of you today. Uh, it's not just for kids. Uh, all of us are kids at heart, especially at Christmas. This is The Spirit of Christmas by Nancy Tillman. I don't know about you, but for me, um, it has not felt the same this year. I so badly miss our worship services, our activities, our events um, that make Christmas what it is because our relationships uh, make Christmas what it is. And so... This book helps me. I hope it helps you, and we'll all take a chance to read it together. I'm going to move you a little closer so you can see the illustrations better. I had just nodded off at a quarter past four when the spirit of Christmas stepped in through my door. With a great show of sparkles, he decked all my halls in tinsel and twinkles and bright shining balls. I was really quite fond of the trimmings he'd brought, but there's just something missing this Christmas, I thought. Bells, he said. Jingle bells. Bells right away. Bells on a one-horse galloping sleigh. A toy soldier band, dressed in matching red sashes. Candy cane tongues, and marshmallow mustaches. Everyone caroling songs of goodwill. I think this is my favorite illustration in all the book. So merry that even the trees can't be still. I shook my head. You are really so kind. But it's just not exactly what I had in mind. He spoke to me then in a whisper of wings. There are gentle things the season brings. You can see the lion and the lamb here together like the prophet um, foretells in the Old Testament. Snow that lies silent, as quiet as a mouse. And roads that all lead to your grandmother's house. Ten lords a leaping as seven swans swim. And of course, Santa Claus. I'm just getting to him. But I lifted my chin and stared up at the ceiling. I still wasn't getting that Christmas feeling. That's when the spirit of Christmas smiled. Remember, this all began with a child. Because it took nothing but love to begin it. 
It's not really Christmas if love isn't in it. Your tree may be large as the room will allow, with a big yellow star on the uppermost bough. But of one thing I'm certain, of one thing, I'm, sh I'm sure of one thing. It is love that makes the angels sing. And that's when I got it. That's when I knew. The thing that was missing from Christmas was you. And so then, my darling, wherever you roam, may you always be safe, may you always come home. For as long as the world still spins and still hums, wherever you are and no matter what comes, the best part of Christmas will always be you beneath my Christmas tree. So that's The Spirit of Christmas by Nancy Tillman. A wonderful book about um, what it is that brings us all together, uh, full of reminisc reminiscences of, um, of childhood and Christmas, uh, but most importantly, uh, about the child, the love the child was born of uh, that marks this season. So I pray for each, each and every one of you the spirit of Christmas um, this day and this coming week. Amen. Friends, will you please join me in prayer? Let us bow our heads. Oh God, for you nothing is impossible. Through a poor young woman in a small town, you gave birth to your realm of endless glory. We pray that by your Holy Spirit you would fill us with new life and hope and overshadow us with your power and grace so that we, like Mary, might be your servants, bearing witness to the promise of your word. We pray this through Jesus Christ, who is coming to reign. And we say, come quickly, abide in us, here and now. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the gospel according to Luke. This is the story, according to Luke, where Jesus' birth um, is foretold to his mother Mary. So Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, on the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. 
He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He'll reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, Well, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Doesn't it just warm your heart when you get a Christmas card in the mail from somebody you haven't heard from or seen in a while? Of course it does. It makes us feel good. And it doesn't even necessarily matter what the card says. Um, what matters is that somebody took the time to think of us and to reach out and to send a card in the first place. I think how we communicate a message is often more important than what the message says. Christmas is a wonderful example of that. 
Have you ever wondered why God chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus? Mary was an ordinary person. She was likely a teenager. She was almost certainly poor. She was definitely not esteemed in any way. Why did God choose her to be the mother of Jesus? Maybe it's because she was an ordinary person. And God does extraordinary things through ordinary people. The message of Christmas is that God does extraordinary things through ordinary people. Amen? Now, often I know that Christmas is a time to go over and above, especially over and above helping those in need, helping those in your family, which is a fine thing to do. But I marvel at the extraordinary things God's ordinary people do every single day. I marvel at nurses who take care of their patients' every little need and restore them back to health. I marvel at grandparents who raise their grandkids. I marvel at business people who mentor kids. I marvel at prayer chain leaders, at teachers, at deacons, at gift givers, at musicians who give voice to God's song. I marvel at cooks who show their love with the fruits of their labor. I marvel at social workers who toil day after day through the muck of life out of love to help people. And I marvel at friends who give of their time to care for those who have been kicked around by the march of time, not because they get anything out of it, but because it's the right thing to do. Ordinary people sing into the darkness each and every day, and God blesses them by doing extraordinary, unexpected things through them. This Christmas, I am especially grateful for folks like Mary, for folks like you, and for the light of Christ, which shines forth in extraordinary ways, even on the darkest night. Amen. We please join me as we affirm our faith. We're going to do this together virtually. So I'll say a line, ask you to repeat that uh, line after me. And so together, we will affirm our faith. Today, we're using a modern affirmation that's entitled, Let Love Dwell Within Us. So please, repeat after me as we affirm our faith. Let the love that shaped heaven and earth dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that created humanity dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that overcomes hatred and suffering dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that forgives and renews dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that brings the blessing of peace dwell within us this Christmas. And may we share that peace with all people, near and far. Amen. Friends, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not a pandemic, not anything. No matter who you are or where you go, God's love is with you always. Embrace God's loving presence and continue to share it with others, if but from a distance. Amen.